All right. Hello again, adventurers, and welcome. Another exciting daily vlog. This is daily vlog number 3022. And today, I want to talk about playing the game wrong. So, I was scrolling Reddit like you do. And I came across this post where somebody goes, uh, what was it? I think it was, oh, it was on the, uh, it was on the Lancer subreddit. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, Lancer, tabletop, uh, indie tabletop RPG. I'm going to be using it for my Metroid campaign, um, in a little over a month. So, someone goes on the Lancer, uh, subreddit and goes, hey, why all the hate for Lancer? Um, and the gist of the post is, hey, I've been hanging out on, uh, Battletech, uh, 4chan. I don't know why they were hanging out on 4chan in general, but apparently there is a large enough community of Battletech people, uh, on 4chan that they have their own kind of subreddit thing. This is not a commentary about 4chan. Um, and they go, yeah, uh, I was, I was on this community, uh, and they just had nothing but bad things to say about Lancer. Like they just really, really hated it. And I just don't understand the hate. Uh, so maybe you guys could explain what it is about the game that these people just don't like. And, <coughs> Sorry. The comments basically boiled into boiled down into two different things. One, 4chan people just don't like progressiveness. And uh, to me, that's the exact same problem that the Battletech people are having, is they're just, they're not looking at the problem, they're just deciding that they don't like these people and then saying that, well, because they're people I don't like, then they do bad things. It's, a, it's the same it's the same problem as writing a villain is like well I'm a bad guy so I do bad things it's not how villains work so that was stupid um, also I don't consider Lancer that quote unquote progressive uh, it's a game about killing people in giant robots however the other the other group of responses could kind of be summed up to the idea of, well, look at the game that they play. Battletech is uh, a miniature war game. It's, it's not a tabletop RPG. Um, and it plays very, very differently from Lancer. Battletech... As much as this is a bit oxymoronic, Battletech tries to put a lot of realism into their giant walking death machine game. Um, sorry, I'm having issues with everything right now. Um, what I mean by that is Battletech is... Uh, uh, if, if you're unfamiliar, uh, Battletech has been around since the 80s. Um, the mid eighties, I think it was like 84 was, uh, the first, or it's, it's existed before that, but the first mech warrior g -g 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 game, which is the video game version of Battletech came out in like 84, um, or 94, somewhere around there, but it's been around for a, 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 a pretty long time. And it is, uh, a tabletop war game. Um, and what it is, is you have these giant walking tanks. They're basically bipedal tanks that you can load all this armament on and then you move them around and you, you fight everything. That is the entirety of Battletech. They do have a tabletop RPG version of B -B 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 Battletech, but it's basically taking the tabletop wargaming rules and then adding a couple roleplay uh, rules on top of it so that you can do... you can. You can roleplay scenes when you're not trying to kill something. 
Uh, but the thing about Battletech is it's very, for lack of a better term, it's very slow and very deliberate because it is a tabletop war game. It's very much about strategy. It's v v v v v v very much uh, uh, about uh, controlling your resources, um, controlling... Uh, uh, statistics and the, 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 the things like that. It's a, it's a tabletop war game. Lancer, on the other hand, uh, and, it, and it strives for quote-unquote realism. Battletech strives for quote-unquote realism, meaning that energy weapons create heat and missiles have to do things and you can't like like jump up into the air and, and fly through there. No, there are jump jacks, but the way that uh, if you were to create a giant bipedal creature and were to put rockets on it, they wouldn't go... <laughs> they would work very similar to how a rocket launch works, where it takes an immense amount of uh, energy to get the initial lift. And once the initial lift is created... Well, then you start actually seeing. But if you've ever if you've ever seen footage or you've you've seen it live uh, of a uh, a rocket launch, like if they're they're sending up a, a shuttle to the International Space Station or something, you see this massive amount of energy and it goes. Well, I guess you can't see it there, so it goes. And gets faster and faster the longer the burn goes, and so like. Jump jets don't work like... And the robots themselves can't, like, jump around and kick and punch and stuff like that. They can punch. Um, but it's very slow, very deliberate for realism. I'm not saying it's a bad system. That is the system that they play. Lancer, on the other hand, is meant to simulate the more anime-style... Robots, things like Gundam and Robotech, uh, stuff like that. It's 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 meant to be faster paced. You are basically controlling a uh, just a very large armored humanoid as opposed to a walking tank. And so, when you ask. Battletech people uh, b -b 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 about Lancer, they're going to go, My realism! It's not real! Uh, and if you point out, yeah, but giant bipedal tanks aren't real either, they go, Yeah, but they could be! No, they couldn't. Not, in no way, shape, or form will that ever b -b 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 be a thing. It's just not how it works. So, uh, I remember reading this that the thread and getting kind of annoyed b -b 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 by it. not by the, the person asking, but because uh, the response again. First of all, all the responses. Well, they're they're conservatives, and so that means that they hate everything. No, you're just a moron. Shut up. Um, but the other thing is like, well, it's just it's a different game, and they don't like it really annoyed me, and I, I was trying to figure out why it was, and it reminded me of a conversation that I had, had with one of my streamer friends. We were suggesting games for them to play, and I said, well, are you interested in Diablo-like games? Uh, I'm sure that there's an actual category uh, that describes games that are very similar to D -D 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 Diablo Now, uh, but... but, 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 but uh, I couldn't tell you what it is. We, we used to call them Diablo clones. Uh, excuse me. But basically what I'm talking about is it's an isometrics perspective. You run around attacking lots of enemies uh, and, you know, you, you generally have different classes and different builds that you can make and, and you go through the story. It's a very action RPG oriented um, and they're a lot of fun. I've actually been playing the um, Diablo 4 expansion uh, the past few days, and I've been having an absolute blast with that. I made a Spirit Walker, which is basically Diablo 4's version of a monk. Um, and the thing that annoys me the most about the Spirit Walker is apparently pants are forbidden for Spirit Walker. What I mean by that is I made 
a male spirit walker. And I have this thing when I'm playing games, I don't like a lot of skin showing on my Kika characters because it just means that those are places that they can get hurt. I like to have my characters actually wearing armor. And with this, uh, all of the armor for Spirit Walkers is not really there. Like half of the chest armors for Spirit Walkers is like a necklace. And the vast majority of their torso is completely uncovered. Well, for the pants, 100% of the Spirit Walker armor is a loincloth and uh, <laughs> tidy whities effectively. And that's all that they can wear is just loincloths and their, their thighs are always... And I get the kind of idea behind this, 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 this spirit walker was meant to emulate uh, a kind of South American Aztec era uh, look. Uh, but I mean, pants have existed for a very, very long time. Like, just give them some pants. But anyway, getting back to my streamer friend. Uh, sorry, trying to get my computer to do something and it doesn't want to do, 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 do it for some bizarre reason. Ugh. There we go. Finally. So, getting back to my s -s 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 streamer friend. The reason I'm opening this up is because I can't remember the name of the goddamn game. What's the game's name? Grim Dawn. There we go. Uh, I ask him, hey, do you like... Uh, Diablo clones because uh, I'm a huge huge fan of Grim Dawn it is an absolutely amazing Diablo clone for whatever if anyone knows what the actual term for games like that are like isometric action RPG or something like that put it in the, the comments down below anyways um, and he goes you know what I really don't like games like that because it's basically just it, you just click your mouse a lot and that's the, the, the gameplay of the entire game is just click your mouse a lot and that annoyed the hell out of me because that's not true in any way, shape, or form. It's the same way uh, there is a YouTuber that I watch that has this massive hard-on for hating Final Fantasy XV. Um, and one of their biggest complaints about Final Fantasy XV, it's like, well, it's just hold, you know, hold a single button and you win. And that's not actually how you play Final Fantasy XV. But if uh, if you've never played it, or uh, you uh, basically broke the g -g 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 game, because there's certain weapons and stuff that you can get very very early on that basically make the game super super easy until the very late giga game. Um, if you do that, then theoretically yes. You can just hold the attack button and get through most combat without too much difficulty. You're going to be taking a significantly l larger amount of damage than you sh sh should. Um, but damage is easy enough to heal outside of k -k 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 combat that as long as you don't, you know, insta-die. And it's remarkably difficult to, to insta-die in Final Fantasy XV. Technically, that'll work. But it's completely missing the point of the entire game. And that was kind of the thing that my streamer firm was doing. Is like, you're missing the point of the entire game. Um, the thing with Diablo clones is not... They're, they're not going to be like... You know... Uh, Hollow Knight, where you have to jump and you have to jump very precisely and then make sure you attack at very certain moments and use your dashes the right... It's not really how Diablo clones are. Diablo clones are effectively D&D &D 3 or 3.55. And what I mean by that is the game portion of a Diablo clone is your character build. Designing and creating your character build coming up with 
what abilities are going to fit your build correctly, what items are going to accentuate those ab 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 abilities, uh, and then what passive buffs you giga give yourself to ensure that everything works the way that, 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 that you want it to. Um, and that's kind of the same way about D&D 3, 3.5, Pathfinder, Ixis, etc. Is the most influential choices you're going to make in a game like that, in a tabletop RPG like that, are at character creation or at level up. Um, and what I mean by that is, uh, let's take uh, a 3.5 character. When you create the character, uh, you're going to put points into certain skills. Um, when you choose those skills, you're basically choosing how your character is going to interact with the world. Because there is a rule for everything in D&D 3.5, it means that each one of these skills has a very particular use. And it is the only way to do that certain thing. You're not allowed to substitute other skills to do the same thing. No, that is the only way. So when you get to a uh, situation where a certain skill is involved in D&D 3.5, you just look for whoever has the highest total in that skill and they make the digit check. So you aren't really choosing. And uh, when you get presented with a p -p 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 problem, Again, because there's a rule for everything, you don't really get to choose how to solve the p -p 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 problem. Um, you just basically get to figure out which skill is required to do, 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 do it, and then everything else is kind of chosen f -f for you based on the choices you made at character creation or at l -l 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 level up. Um, and that was one of the, 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 the uh, critiques I heard of Pathfinder 2nd Edition um, was that... Uh, in combat you basically did the same thing over and over like every turn was exactly the same because you had created a character that excelled at these particular things and so when you were put, put into a situation uh and optimization is key in pathfinder in general uh so when you were put into a situation you really could only do the things that you were op your character was optimized for, 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 for. Um, so the thing is with Diablo clones and D and D third edition style gig -ga -ga games, the game isn't about the choices you make while you're role playing. The game is about the choices you make while creating your build. And the role-playing sections where you're actually rolling dice in that is basically just you testing your build and seeing how good, 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 good it is so that as you level up, you can continue improving your b -b 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 build. And that's still fun. Like I said, I really enjoy... I, I played the hell out of Diablo 3. Um, I've been playing uh, a pretty massive amount of Diablo 4 recently. Now that they've fixed a lot of the issues that were there on launch, um, I've actually been really, really enjoying it. Um, uh, I played a decent amount of Diablo 2. I have tons of hours in G -G 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 Grim Dawn. Um, and there's a bunch of other kind of Diablo clones that I really, really enjoy. And it's not because the game is really difficult or requires me to put the right buttons at the right time. Like my build for my Spiritborn right now is basically... I have an ability called, I think it's called Ravage, um, which basically it's a buff. I I, uh, I have it set to my L2 trigger because uh, I play on my PS5. Um, uh, I hit that and it instantly makes all enemies around me vulnerable and it makes me do extra damage with every hit. It also changes uh, one of my attacks to basically dash to uh, the nearest enemy before it does it. Uh, and then the other thing is I have my ultimate, where I jump into the air, I slam down on a bunch of enemies, and then a giant jaguar, giant spirit jaguar, comes around and just slashes everyone in a circle around me. And so I turn on the buff, jump into a group of enemies with my spirit jaguar, and then I just mash the square button over and over and over again. 
until one of those uh, to the two things goes off on cooldown, which they both go off on cooldown, uh, go off of cooldown um, at about the same time. So it's L2, R2, R2 is where I have my ultimate. L2, R2, square, 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 square. L2, R2, square, 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 square. It's all I do. It's a mind-numbingly simple process. Um, and it's a hell of a lot of fun. Not because I'm doing all this, but because I have spent hours creating this build and trying different things and switching out different items and, and, and legendary effects and things like that. And to me, that's fun. Because the actual going out and killing things, that's me testing my build and seeing what things need to change to make my build better but the fun part of the game is designing the build it's not the button mashing in between um and listening to someone go yeah it's just clicking your mouse you've missed the entire point of the game because it's not just clicking your mouse in order to get to the point where you can just click your mouse you have to really understand the system and create a build well, that will work because not our builds are created equal. Um, until I got a specific item for my build, I had one of the weakest builds in the game. I was constantly d -d 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 dying because uh, Blizzard has not balanced uh, this game very well yet. Um, or this new class very well yet because there's a, there is a single build um, that instead of like I have a three button build. I go L2, R2, square, 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 square. There is a build that is a one-button build. Uh, the circle button on the PS5 is the dodge button. On PC, it's the space bar. There is a build where every time you dodge, they call it evading in that, you shoot off these electric feathers. And through a combination of a bunch of different... Uh, legendary items and, and, and stuff like that. You can basically make it so that you have effectively unlimited evades because normally there's a cooldown to it. You can basically make it to where you have un unlimited evades and those little feathers do so much damage that you can one-shot half the bosses, half the endgame bosses uh, in the game just melt to this particular b -b 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 build. It is nonsense. I'm not playing that build. <laughs> I chose, I just randomly chose because there's four different elemental t -t 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 types and I chose the fire one. Apparently the fire one is the bad one. But anyway, so it just, it really, really f -f 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 frustrated me that it was basically someone whittling down a game to this is the end game result and completely ignoring all the work it takes to create a situation where that would actually work. Because again, if you don't create your build rights, you can't just go in and just massively click. You have to be constantly dodging, making sure you're not taking da -da 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 damage. Like that playstyle does exist. It's just a, a really, really um, suboptimal because a lot of the times when you get to really, really high, high levels in it, um, there are so many enemies around that you simply can't sit there and dodge every attack and stuff like that. Like, you have to create a build that kills enemies fast enough that they don't instantly overwhelm you. And so if you just watch it, or you use someone else's b -b 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 build or something like that, uh, you miss out on a massive amount of the g -g 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 game. And so it, it, it got me to thinking, well, why do, I, why do I care so much about that happening with Lancer? I haven't actually played lancer yet um and i don't understand why i would care at all at that and i think the reason why was i saw another post on D, D reddit talking about why all the hate for fourth edition and it was the exact same thing and so i i made the connection the reason i don't like it when people basically just completely misunderstand the point of a game is because that's what happened with fourth edition constantly and it happens with fifth edition now um specifically pathfinder bros are really really b -b 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 bad at this but i've also seen it from uh anyone that really prefers another game what they will do is they will focus on the thing that their game does well 
and uh, claim that, well, because 5th edition either doesn't do it well or doesn't do it as well as their particular giga game, that the entirety of 5th edition is whittled down to just that one uh, thing that they think their game does b -b -b better. Or 5th edition just does very, very b -b 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 poorly. Uh, with 4th uh, edition, one of the things is 4th edition you can't roleplay in. Yes, you can. There's t First of all, there's tons of rules for how roleplay works in 4th edition. It's not quite 3rd edition levels of nonsense. Uh, but there's tons of... And there's tons of p -p 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 powers uh, that are uh, non-combat abilities. They're exclusively f -f 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 for roleplay. And they get really creative, especially when you start getting to higher level uh, p -p -p powers. They're really great and awesome and f -f 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 fun. Um, but the people that just don't like 4th edition in general would whittle everything down to 4th edition. Well, you can't roleplay in it. Yes, you can. That is nothing. To, but but in my game, roleplaying is this really complex thing. And in your game, you just use powers. They, they they changed the names of abilities to powers. That's all it was. You have abilities in other tabletop RPGs or skills or lots of other ways. That's all it was is these are the features. In, in uh, Essence 20, uh, they call them either features or um, perks. It's, that's, all, that's all it is. It's just a different name for the exact same thing same thing is true about f f f f fifth edition I've, I've heard a lot of people go well fifth edition uh f f fifth edition limits everything that you can do like every single character is exactly the same no it's not there's in no way shape or form is that a ch -ch 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 true statement now if you had two people that chose the same class the same subclass and the same feats well then yes they're going to be identical characters but you can have two character or two players create two characters that are the same class, and if they choose different subclasses, they will play massively differently. If they choose the same subclass, but they choose different feats, they will play somewhat differently. Uh, differently. In general, I tend to recommend um, at my table don't double up on subclasses because you start feeling redundant very very quick. Um, but 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 but. but there's plenty of ways to create really interesting, unique k -k 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 characters. And with certain classes, uh, the, 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 the things like, especially things like the Warlock, where so much of the class is built into their Eldritch invocations, to where you can have the same class and same s -s 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 subclass, but if you choose different invocations, the characters are going to play very differently. And if you choose different spells, the characters are going to play very, very d -d 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 differently. Um, so, uh, yeah, I just, like I said, it, it, it got me th 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 thinking about, uh, and I'll, I will ask this to you guys, what are tabletop RPGs where people have basically missed the point to, uh, to attack that particular RPG? You know, the same thing as in a, a Diablo style g -g 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 game. Oh, it's just clicking a lot. It's just, it's cookie clicker with explosions. You've missed the entire point of the game. Congratulations. Um, like I said, in, in tabletop RPGs in, uh, in particular, what are some of, well, you've missed the entire point of the game uh, the, 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 that you have heard, uh, either about your favorite tabletop RPG, or maybe you've done the exact same thing, not realizing that you were doing it about another RPG, or just something that you've heard constantly. You're like, well, this is what I've heard about this tabletop RPG, and it just seems like it can't be true. Because if this really was true, no one would actually play that game. Let me know in the kick comments down below. Like I said, I've given a, uh, I've given a few different examples. Like a fourth edition is just a video game. It's not, never has been. Uh, f f f f f fifth edition, all the characters are the same. It's not, never has been. Um, 
trying to think of other t -t 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 tabletop RPGs. Well, anyway, let me know in the kicker comments down below. Otherwise, again, that is all for me today. I will see you guys next time. All right? Bye-bye.